Hey folks, Dave Ashenbrenner, welcome back um, to my new series called How in the Hell Does He Do It? series. So we're not going to hold back. I'm going to kind of work you through how I work out tank designs and what I do when I uh, when an order is placed here and what it takes to make a authentically, um, I hate to use the word perfect, but no, authentically correct shaped gas tank. And here's how we do it. I start out with a flat sheet of aluminum, and then I uh, do some measurements. Um, a lot of times I'll scan. I'll scan the tank with a laser scanner, and we'll make a plug on my router and vacuum form a, a plastic form of it, and then I'll fiberglass it. And I'll use that fiberglass form to pound the tank into it. It's sort of a reverse buck method. And it works really well because you really can't get this kind of detail if you're working with a buck on the inside of it. I've seen people do it. It might work out well if you're doing uh, coach work, hot rods, something like that. You can get close enough with it and nobody can really tell. But a gas tank really relies on close measurements so that it fits around the frame pieces. Um, if you look here, this is, a, this is going on a Norton Commando. This is a Dunstall. Uh, 810 tank and they made these for I believe three years by uh, Paul Dunstall and designed this gas tank and of course um, being fiberglass these things will go away after so many years um, even if there isn't ethanol in a tank before that I've had problems with with uh, even non-ethanol fuel uh, eating these or making the tank soft so we're doing a reproduction of this. Uh, the only caveat here, if you look at this reproduction tank, we placed the cap, relocated the cap to the center of the tank. And the reason for that is when we go to weld the bung in, there's a welded in bung in, we actually screw, we'll actually screw the, the cap into it. This is the original Ciandis uh, gas cap that goes on here. They make a filler neck that screws in and um, to do that you'll see I beat the flanges down in here and when you install it it's welded around the bottom here so you don't have any weld around the top and I can show you an example of that. Um, probably in my next video I'll show you a finished tank <clears throat> that has that bung welded into it but in the meantime um, you can see the squared off corners this is kind of tough we made this tank in three pieces we made the two sides and those were beat into the mold uh, very carefully and to maintain the shape on the back of it has a very pronounced flat where the seat comes up against the back of it. it has a very pronounced line that goes across the continuous line that goes across the top here and then the continuous line that goes across for the flat seat front has to match it has to match the seat etc on there and then probably the hardest thing this is something that'd be really hard for anybody to do any other way would it be would be to make these chevrons in the tank, and I think it would show up better. So I just showed it on the alloy tank here. It's got a little chevron shape in it right here. This is the original design. And you can also see a faint, there's also a faint line coming up from the corner, and it comes up about an inch. There's about an inch wide strip here, and just a faint body line that comes up this way. So that would be just impossible to do if you had to. Uh, do it any other method. So this is why I stick to this method. Um, probably the best part about this, it's hard to maintain when you're trying to tip this edge over on the bottom. It wants to straighten out so you're constantly uh, stretching and shrinking the flanges on the outside of it and to get it right 
It's got to fit on the motorcycle a certain way, especially these commando frames. What I'll do is I'll take the original tank and I'll draw out with felt tip marker, I'll draw out the profile of the bottom. And what I can do is I can keep coming back and checking myself. Whenever I beat on this tank, I want to make sure that it's wide enough in the correct places here so that it fits on the frame. And uh, that's sort of it. Um, we have tanks being finished in different stages right now, and I will get to those, and I'll show you maybe in our next installment. I'll bring out another tank that we're in a different stage on and uh, give you the rundown on that, but um, I thought you might like to know. might be good information to know how we, how we do this and why our tanks are so authentically shaped. Well, another thing that we do that's quite important uh, you're in the CAD room in my office and we are on uh, an AutoCAD screen right now and what I'll do is any of the specialty parts that I need let's say uh, we're going to use the well as an example over here on this tank that we're working on the one I just showed you on the bench this is the layout for the tunnel height in the front and in the back and the distance between the two we laid this out so we can cut the sheet metal this is basically a sheet metal layout template and we in this case I'll make a cardboard template so that I can position it out of a raw piece of aluminum sheet so I don't waste any aluminum is extremely rare and expensive these days so we don't want to be cutting stuff out twice and three times, so I've kind of taken to doing this on CAD first and getting the layout proper. And we're going to take it right out into the shop and I'll show you how we use this. Alrighty, as you can see, this is the printout of what you just saw on the computer screen. And this just gives me some layout dimensions for this and a center line. Important uh, to put that center line there. Then I transferred everything over to a piece of cardboard and cut it out and then it got transferred to a sheet of aluminum where we were able to use the um, scrap pieces of aluminum or some of the cutoffs of the aluminum that this really helps us out so uh, that's the tunnel this is the tunnel for this and as you can see we have installed it in the tank and then put a cutoff line down here I always go a little half inch on each end longer so I can position it forward or backward to get it to fit level with the tank bottom. And then I'll trim those pieces and the next step is to, after we weld our cap bung in, is to weld it in to the tank. And then we have some cutouts to do on the bottom of the tank. and. Uh, just a reminder, that's got to fit on a Norton Commando, and there are a few little caveats on that that we have to pay attention to, so that's kind of the, the layout, some of the layout that we do. So, until next time, cheers. This is Dave Ashenbrenner. Thanks for stopping in.